Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about the distributor, DC distributor, which is being fed at both the ends. That is due to a concentrated loading condition. So now, whenever it has been possible, we can uh, say that whatever we discussed in the previous one, we had the uniform distribution, which is being fed at one end only. So all the topics that were discussed in the previous one was from one end only. So once you have a long distributor, it is desirable to feed it from both the ends, which is being possible. So consider a long distributor, so like this. So I have end A and end B written like this. So in order to meet the loading requirements that is being present there, so it is better that you feed it from both the ends. That is at end A and end B in this type of feeding network. So the two ends of the distributor may be supplied with the two different voltages or at equal voltages. So one, we can maintain uh, equal uh, magnitude of the voltages. And next one, we may have the unequal level of voltages that is being present there. So equal level and unequal level of voltages which is being present there. In such cases, we might go for A and B as the two feeding points which are being present there. So instead of having one, the total voltage drop, which is uh, considerably reduced without increasing the cross-sectional area of the conductor. So what is the main advantage of uh, having it is the total voltage drop, the total voltage drop that is being present there. So the total voltage drop can be considerably reduced without increasing the cross-sectional area of it. Total voltage drop can be reduced can be reduced considerably considerably okay considerably without increasing the area of cross section of the conductor without increasing the area of cross section of the material so area of cross section of the conductor so conductor material or generally we talk about conductor there. So this is uh, one thing which is being uh, present there. So total voltage drop can be reduced considerably without increasing the area of cross section of the conductor there. So suppose if I have a, a 100 kilometer distributor line or a 200, 150 kilometer distributor line, in such cases, so A and B might be supplied with equal level of voltages or unequal level of voltages. So equal or unequal level of voltages that is being present there. So equal and unequal level of voltages that is being present. So let us look at the first one that is two ends of the distributor, two ends of the distributor A and B, which is being fed at equal level of voltages. So first one, so two ends of the distributor, two ends of the distributor fed at fed at equal voltages equal voltages so that is being present there so let me consider this distributor a b which is being present there so two ends are being present a and b with equal level of voltages say b volts and having a concentrated uh, loads say i1 i2 i3 i4 and generally we take here as I5. Okay, so let me mark the currents here as I1, I2, I3, I4, and I5. So these are the five currents which are being present there. And when I say which is being fed at equal level of voltages, I'll be having the points C, D, E, F, and G, which is being present there. So these are the points which are con generally considered to be the points where it draws the current I1, I2, I3, I4 and I5 respectively. So as we move away from one of the feeding points, say, let me start from A here. So as we move, the potential difference goes on decreasing till it reaches the minimum value at some loading point, say E. So because as we keep on increasing the distance here, so as we move away, so some generally I take this distance to be L here. So if I keep on moving uh, in this direction, and again, if I move from uh, this direction, so there will be a 
minimum potential say e so this point e let me write here point e is said to be is said to be having the minimum potential having the minimum potential so this is what it has been that so this is we generally consider it to be point e having the minimum potential there so this is the point say e so then it again start rising and becomes v voltage as we go to the other point so if i take uh, from here it will have a decrease and minimum potential and then it can say that it increases there so this is somewhat like this type of graph which is being present there so this is the point e so this is at point e so as we move away so you will be having a decrease and then after some time it starts increasing there so we can generally say that in each and every loading condition this will be the flow of current and this will be the flow of the other current which is being present there so i have this direction this is the point e which is being considered and all the currents are tapped off between point a to e that is the minimum potential difference point that is point e so which will be supplied from the feeding point a while those tapped between b and d will be supplied from feeding point b the current tapped off at point e itself will be partly supplied from a and partly supplied from b so the current i3 will have uh, this one say uh, let me mark it as x and let me mark it as y here so the current i3 will be having x plus y which is being present there so i3 current so this is what we important conclusion that is that at the point of minimum potential current comes from both the ends of the distributor so i3 will be equal to x plus y so this is considered to be the point of uh, minimum potential it is generally considered to be located the point of minimum potential so let me have uh, another diagram which uh, shows here so let me write down this uh, diagram yes so let me write down the point of uh, minimum potential this is this is considered to be the point of minimum potential here yeah point of minimum potential okay so if i want to talk about point of uh, minimum potential it is generally desired to locate the point of minimum potential so by considering the distributor say ab so ab e is a distributor of say any length and having three concentrated loads which are being present there so this is the terminal a and v is the point and v here is again a potential so both are being fed at both ends there so i have currents i1 i2 and i3 so i1 i2 and i3 are the currents that is being present there so c d and e are the points which are being taken out so what we can generally say is suppose if i have the current being supplied by the end a so that is the feeding point a so i have it as ia then the current distribution so this current whatever that has been there so this is the section ac so i have the current flowing through it called as ia so ia is the current that is being flowing through it and next i have the current say i1 is going down here so the current in section ia minus i1 that is being present here so next ide so i have currents that is being going there as ia minus i1 minus i2 so again i have the current in section eb which is being present there so that is been given as ia minus i1 minus i2 minus i3 that is being present there so these are the currents in various sections of the distributor that is being present there so if i want to talk about the voltage drop between uh, the points a and b so if i want to talk about uh, this voltage drop that is being present here so this is the voltage drop voltage drop across ab across ab so if i want to talk about this voltage drop so i need to find out the voltage difference that is being present there that is v minus v so that is entirely equal to 
the individual currents and the resistance of each and every section that is being present there. So IA can be calculated. So I'll write down the equation again. Yes. So V minus V is to be calculated. V minus V. Let me calculate it here. So V minus V can be calculated as IAC. Okay. IAC into RAC. Okay. Plus. So this is the term there. Plus ICD into. Yeah. This is the value of RCD. Similar to that. IDE. Okay. Into RDE. Plus. Yeah. Every. Every. A potential drop across each and every section that is being found out. IDE into RDE. Next IEB into next one is IEB is there. So next you need to calculate REB that is being present there. So each and every voltage drop that is to be calculated here. So these are the points what you need to consider here. So these are four different voltage drops that are being present. And V minus V is to be present there. <coughs> okay, so you know that that equation uh, will have uh, the current say IAC will be given by IA the current being flowing uh, feeding point A. So generally, when I consider the feeding point A, there I'll be having current IA, and ICD will be having the other conductor. Sorry, the other. Uh, value of the current that is being present there that is ICD that is having IA minus I1 okay next IDE okay IDE can be calculated by this current that is IA minus I1 minus I2 next IEB that is being given as IA minus I1 minus I2 minus I3 so these are the individual current sections that are being present there in such cases. So the unknown IA can be calculated as the values of the other quantities uh, are given are generally given. So I know that. So if say a motor of three, yeah, three different motors are being connected to the loading points here. So what I can generally say is I'll be having uh, the current ratings of certain motors, which has been drawn generally uh, when the motors are rotating at full loaded condition. So whatever may be the loading conditions, the value of current can be easily brought to us. And what we can generally conclude is I want to calculate what is the incoming currents that is being flowing from the point A. So if I want to analyze this one, this one, I'll be having the current ratings of three different uh, loading points which are being given there. So actual directions of the current in various section of the distributor are indicated in the figure what I have shown here. So the load point where the currents are coming from both the sides of the distributor is the point of minimum potential that is point E in uh, this case the earlier case what I wanted to show there. So this is the earlier case here. Yes, so this is the earlier case. This is the point is generally called as the minimum potential minimum potential point minimum potential point hope you have understood so each and every loading condition will be having such minimum uh, potential point which is to be considered so if i have what two like you will be knowing what would be in case of the even distributor so in case of even distributor any one points which has been considered can be taken as a minimum uh, potential point there. so that is what it has been there here so the uh, figure what has been shown here. So here you will be having the minimum potential point. That is the potential drop where you will be having the minimum potential is generally considered to be the minimum potential point. There. So this forms for uh, the equal voltages. So this is for the equal voltages. So what happens in case of unequal voltage? So two ends, two ends fed with fed with unequal voltages unequal voltages so if i have uh, unequal voltage so what will be the scenario there so again let me draw a dc distributor say again uh, i have two feeding points say a and b so these two feeding points are having the potentials v1 and 
V2. So I1, I2, I3. Generally, now I'll be having one more. Let me write it uh, one more here. So I'll be having four currents. Say I1, I2, I3, and I4, which is being present there. So let me uh, write down the points also. C, D, E, and F there. So these are the uh, uh, points where are generally considered to be the loading points there. So once I consider uh, these points to be the loading terminals, so I'll be having the voltage at A being fed at uh, V1, voltage at B which is being fed at V2. So the minimum uh, potential which can be followed, like what we followed in the previous one, can be used uh, for the unequal voltage uh, voltage level also. So now if I want to found, find the voltage level, say suppose, for example, V1 will be at some 440 volt DC supply, V2 will be some at the 430 volt DC supply. So now if I want to find out the total voltage drop across this entire distributor, so that will be V1 minus V2. So that will be the total voltage drop, total voltage drop, total voltage drop across distributor AB, across distributor AB, across distributor AB. So DC distributor, so that's what it is, across DC distributor AB there. So that is the voltage drop over the DC distributor AB. So V1 minus V2 is being present there. So the same uh, terminals are the same way we can uh, carry out the all the procedure, what we did for equal level voltages. So the same can be retained for unequal level of voltages also. In the next video, we'll be discussing regarding the numerical problems on the DC distributor, which is fed at equal voltages and also at unequal voltages. Thank you.